How's everybody doing? Mike here at the Limo Garage again. And today we're working on a 2008 Chrysler 300. This is our pink limo, also known as Pink Pearl. And this has the 3.5 V6 in it. And today we're going to be showing you guys how to fix what's known as an extended crank uh, or an intermittent extended crank or also known as a hard start on these vehicles. It's a very, very common problem and it's one that's easily fixed. So let's get right to it. We're going to be replacing the sensors for the camshaft and the crankshaft. They always get replaced at the same time and they always get replaced with OEM factory parts only. That's my preference. That's just how I am. So anyways, let me give you guys the science behind this of why we're replacing these. What will happen is you'll go to start the vehicle and turn the key and the engine will turn over and turn over and turn over and turn over and turn over and, turn over and then eventually it starts after 45 seconds of turning over. It shouldn't do that. The engine should start up right away within the first 10 seconds. Um, so it's annoying and it's also embarrassing if you're starting it in front of the wrong person. It doesn't mean the vehicle is not going to start, but it is annoying. And let me explain to you exactly the science of what's happening when it's doing this. Okay, The job of these two sensors is to tell the computer where in rotation certain parts of the engine are, the camshaft and the crankshaft. So it tells the computer when to fire your fuel injectors and when to fire your spark plugs. Well, if one of these sensors or both of these sensors fail, what will happen is for those first 45 seconds, the computer is looking for that signal. And if it doesn't get that signal after a certain amount of time, what will happen is the computer will, will default to what's a, called a default start program. And it will use that information to start the vehicle. So when you're cranking and cranking and cranking and it's not starting, the computer is looking for the sensor and when it finally it says, okay, this sensor is screwed up, let's default and we're gonna start anyways. That's what's happening, okay? It's a very common problem and it's a real easy fix. You can do this in-house, shouldn't take you more than 20 minutes. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna show you the parts that you need, okay? This one right here is your crankshaft sensor. I buy them straight from Chrysler. There's the part number. This one is your camshaft sensor, and there's your part number for that, okay? And believe it or not, when I called AutoZone and Advanced and every other aftermarket place out there to price these out, they were almost double the price. I got these for about $38 each from the dealership, and I think aftermarket wanted almost double that, so you're getting an OE part for half the price. So, now, to do the camshaft sensor, very simple. It's right here. I already unplugged this, so just unplug that plug, set it aside. That's a little eight, eight millimeter screw right there. Very simple. All you're gonna do is unscrew this and that sensor slides right out. Just don't drop this screw because then you're gonna get really pissed off. I'm sure everybody likes getting a nice look at my fat hand in here. There we go. All right, then just give it a little twist and it comes right out. And there's also a little O-ring on here. Make sure that that O-ring is still there and it didn't fall down inside the hole. You don't want that down in there, it cause all kinds of havoc. So there's that, there's our old one. There's our new one, the new one goes in just as easy as the old one came out. Slide it in, little twist. Put your little eight millimeter bolt back in. Put it in by hand. No need to be using power tools or anything here. Then when you go to use your wrench, just snug it up quick and easy. And that's it for that. Dealership would have charged you 60 bucks to do that. So now we gotta do the crankshaft sensor, which is a little bit more involved, but still pretty easy. We're gonna need the jack and the jack stand, and we're gonna get this thing up in the air. Usually right about now is when I would shut the camera off and just have it already jacked up. But I've had people ask me, where are your jack up points? Where are your lift points? Can you please show that? So let's keep going. I like to use my heavy duty heavy-duty floor jack. 
I don't like using cheap scissor jacks, they're not safe. Alright, here we go. Just bounce the camera around like crazy. We're gonna go right under here. And what I have found to be the best lift point for these vehicles, and it's gonna be the same all the way up to, I think, 2010. It could be 2009, don't quote me on that. Get my light in here so you guys can see where my lift point is. All right. So you can see I'm lifting on this part of the front subframe. Right there. It's actually kind of just right behind your steering rack. So that's a good solid point right there to pick up on. We're also going to put a jack stand once we get this up in the air. So you want to get this up high enough so that you can actually climb underneath here. Don't be climbing underneath this thing until you get a jack stand under it. Alright, so now I think we've got the vehicle at a height that's acceptable to climb underneath. Now we're going to put a jack stand under there. Because I don't have a whole lot of faith in hydraulics. I've grown kind of attached to my face. So, well, I gotta go up higher. Okay. Go up a few more pumps. Right about now is when you find out how good they really built this limo when your window starts popping out. That should have given me enough height now. There we go. Now, you can see where I'm putting the jack stand? This is a good solid structure right here, right on your floor joist. You can actually see this arrow that's here? That's a good indicator of a good spot to put a jack, jack stand. So I'm gonna put that right there. Now the only thing you wanna watch for when you're doing this, look on these edges to make sure there's no fuel lines brake lines or any wires that are running along there that you could possibly crush or damage. So I've got that in a good place. Now I'm going to lower the jack so that the jack stand is doing all the work. Okay, let's change out a crankshaft sensor. So I've got my jack stand in place. I got the jack out of the way so I have some room. Now we're on the front passenger side of this vehicle. We're going to go right up alongside the transmission here. All right. Get my light in here, and you're going to see your sensor is actually right there, if I can get in here with this camera, let's see, there we go, so that's it, right there, very easy to get to has a 10 millimeter bolt holding it in place and it's designed just like the one that we saw up top that one had an 8 millimeter this one's got a 10 millimeter so first thing you're gonna do is just unplug it that. you know I gotta hand it to some guys that are better at doing these videos I have a bitch of a time holding this camera and getting this done so I'm never going to win an award for best production, that's for sure. All right, so now you can see it a little bit better. And you're just going to take your 10 millimeter. That's all you're going to need right here. Just take out that little bolt that's right on the end of it. You'll see it. Now, if you've never taken this out, remember, this is a, a bolt that's going into aluminum. So if you've ever taken a bolt out of aluminum before, you know, sometimes they don't like to cooperate. You know, they could be oxidized in there. So if it feels like it's coming out tight, don't just start yanking on it. You might have to put a little bit of penetrating oil in it or work it back and forth. You do not want to break this bolt off in here. You're going to be mighty pissed off. Now, we've owned this vehicle for quite some time. And this will be the third time I've replaced these sensors in this vehicle's lifetime. So this bolt's coming out like butter. Yep, that's right. Third time. What does that tell you? I don't know. It tells you these parts are junk when they're new. So, when this thing started doing this to us last week, again, I knew what it was going to be. It hadn't done it in almost two years. Got a complaint of an extended crank, and I said, okay, 
I'll order the sensors again. And I always replace them in a pair. Never change just one. Doesn't make sense. All right, so I've got that unscrewed. So we can just take this out now. You know, same as the other one. Take your screw out the rest of the way. There's that. And just wiggle this thing out. And this one does not have an O-ring on it. This one just sticks into the bell housing of the transmission. All right, so there's that. Grab my new one. There's our new one. You know, I'd really like to try to get this camera up here so you guys can really see what it is I'm doing. Yeah, whatever. There's going to be some extensive editing on this video. <laughs> All right, so just slide the new one in there and throw in that bolt and plug it back in, and you're done. All right, so I did manage to get a little bit of a better angle. You can see that's where the sensor is. That's where she goes, and it's right on the side of the transmission bell housing on the passenger side. And make sure you do this with the engine cold, because that's the catalytic converter right next to it. That's gonna make for some serious burns. So we're going to put that 10 millimeter screw back in and plug in that harness and uh, that's it, we're done. Alright, so we're back on the ground. Let's see if we fixed anything. First thing I do is unplug my battery tender, as you guys all know. I love keeping battery tenders on vehicles. So we're going to unplug this. Never start a vehicle with a battery tender plugged in. So we're just going to unplug that. Shut off my magical red switch. Which, if you guys want to know what that is, you better check out one of my other videos that says never replace an alternator again because you're stuck on the road. All right, everything's out of the way. Let's get this stuff out of here. All right, let's see if this thing runs. Starts right up every time. It's fixed. Alright guys, thanks for watching the Limo Garage. We'll see you next time.